Welcome to another Tear Maker. We've been on a movie kick lately. The last couple have been directors, and we're going to keep that train rolling with Wes Anderson. Now, people are very opinionated about Wes Anderson. I don't know about you. I have opinions on his work. I'm a bit of a film snob. All right, maybe you got that from some of my other tier makers, but not too much of one. All right, I like movies where stuff blows up. Nothing really blows up in any of these movies. I'm just going to spoil that right now. But if you've seen any of these movies, you know what Wes Anderson's films are like. Bar none, point blank, just he is an auteur. He has weird characters, nerdy type characters in somewhat, somewhat extreme situations, kind of, some more than others. And I'll tell you, I think he has a very visual eye. He has made two stop motion films, which is kind of amazing. And we're going to talk about every one of his films here. I will say there is one film that I have only seen about a third of. And we'll start with that one, and that is The Darjeeling Limited. I've heard it's a pretty good movie. I did not get to finish that film, and I did not have the desire to go back to it. I didn't really care about the two brothers um, as I was watching it, and I was just like, eh, and then I couldn't, I had to leave, and it was on cable. And I was like, you know, I could set the DVR and catch a, a replay of it, and I just never did. Now, when I'm done doing the rankings, I hope y'all in chat, or on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube, will post something of if you think Darjeeling Limited is worth my time. Is it S tier? Is it F tier? Is it in the middle? I don't know. By the way, my sinuses are acting really funky because the weather's gotten cold here. Uh, I did my uh, nasal uh, nasal cork thing in my nose. It hasn't really kicked in yet. So, uh, ugh. sorry if I sound a little nasally. Okay, um, we are going to start these in chronological order otherwise so Darjeeling is the one I took off the table because I have not seen it I have seen all the rest of these so we'll talk about them uh chat already is that Grand Budapest Hotel it is it is it's the uh third from the right prepare to have no argument for me I have no opinion Riz in the chat has not seen any You're not seen any Wes Anderson films um let's start with Bottle Rocket he made a short film, Wes Anderson, in Austin, and it did well enough to get him funding to make a feature-length version of Bottle Rocket. Very small-town, small-minded, criminal-type movie, very indie. It has its defenders, it has its fans. I'm not one of them, all right? I've watched it twice. It, it's the movie that launched the careers of Wes Anderson and the, the Owen, Luke and Owen Wilson. The, the brothers, both of them, all three of them launched because of this movie. It really got their attention. Uh, people paid attention to them because of this movie. It's a pretty good indie film. But for me, it's like a C. Considering it had no budget, and they weren't trying to make a big time movie, but when you look at Wes Anderson's films, it is the only one that visually is not that appealing. Even without a budget, there are things you can do to have your signature. And I'll be honest, this is the least Wes Anderson film ever. So if you're not a fan of Wes Anderson, maybe you should give Bob Rocket a try because it's the least of his films in terms of him trying to do things, you know, visual tricks and, you know, smart ass type camera movements and things. Uh, look, he has a very specific style and it it's inspired by some of the greats. But it is very much Wes Anderson and the way they're edited, the color, the the, the, the different colors that he uses. It, you watch something and you're like, this is a Wes Anderson film. You can tell in every other movie in here. Well, the two stop motion films, I would argue it's a little harder to do that because the camera doesn't move like it does in all of his live action films. But this is a pretty big butt. I like big butts. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Even in those films, the characters, the delivery of the, the line readings is somewhat similar. So if you're just listening to the two stop motion films that he's made, you could still kind of tell that it's Wes Anderson. Bottle Rocket, not so much. Good cast. Decently made. Zero budget. Launched the career of three different people. 
I don't really care about it at all. When I watch it, there's a couple of chuckles. Some people love this movie. I'm just not one of them. Now, Rushmore is a little bit different. And I'd seen Bottle Rocket before, and I didn't think much of it. And then when I saw Rushmore from the maker of Bottle Rocket, I went, oh, yeah, mm, I'll watch it. <laughs> didn't see it in a the theater. Saw Roger Ebert gave it two stars, which I was surprised because he liked Bottle Rocket. I think he gave it three. And at, at this time, I was in college and I was you know, reading Roger Ebert like every Friday on the website, reading Chicago Sun-Times slash Ebert, getting his reviews every Friday. And he gave it two out of, st- out of four on this one. And it was a thumbs down. And I was like, really? Because it's Bill Murray. And I'm going to watch pretty much anything Bill Murray does. I mean, I watched his... Uh, what was the Flowers movie that he did with uh, Jim Jarmusch? Like, totally just weird. He was in a phase where he worked with pretty much every little independent director he could for about 10 or 12 years. And this was one that he did. And it started something because he's in a bunch more of those films. In fact, Wes Anderson, that's a thing. You're going to see him working with the same direct, uh, same actors a lot in these movies. Rushmore, to me... It, 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 mm. it's the first real Wes Anderson film in the subtlety of the humor the, the editing the, the way that the, it feels like it's being filmed in different acts like intentionally that there are stopping points and they'll, the way he edits to like another uh, section it, it, there's I mean it's almost like a curtain opening up a curtain closing and a curtain opening like he's very visual in that way and Rushmore is the first film to really make you feel like you're watching like a filmed play, which is funny because there's a play in the movie towards the end. And I won't say what movie it's of. It's just funny. It's a funny choice. And it's one that you would not think that this character, which by the way, this launched a couple more careers, specifically Jason Schwartzman. <laughs> Rushmore is a movie that gets better the more I watch it. And I've watched it five or six times. Uh, it's an S for me. And look, there are people who will say it's not that great a movie. I get it. It's a little petty at times when Bill Murray and Jason Schwartzman are kind of uh, going back and forth with like a prank war. I love it. I love it. There are so many good quotes in this movie. Where's Bastard Skelly? You should be in chat right now. There's a line in here that we quote on a pretty pretty regular basis. You were in Vietnam? Yeah, I was in Vietnam. Were you in the shit? Yeah, I was in the shit. <laughs> it's just like, the way the line's delivered is so deadpan, it's fucking hilarious. But Bill Murray's character slowly losing his mind as he's competing for the affection of this teacher that Jason Schwartzman's also... Like, neither one of them is ever going to end up with the girl, right? They're not going to. Oh, God, I don't want to spoil it. Rushmore is a fantastic film. It's very funny. It... it there are people who have based their entire personality traits around Rushmore. So I'm not one of those people, but I love that movie and it has held up over time. Now here's a movie that has a ton of defenders as well, but Royal Tenenbaums. Oh my God, I hate this movie. Let me tell you, I'm sorry. If you love this movie, I'm sorry. I hate this movie. I hate the characters. I hate their rich smarminess. I hate the problems that they have are the epitome of first world problems. And the characters are so weird that they're not relatable. That's the thing to me. Now, maybe that means I'm too normie. I'm not that normie. I'm on the wrong side of 40s of my 40s. I'm on the wrong side of 40. Yeah. That, am I saying that right? And I'm here streaming on Twitch. Clearly, I'm, I'm something's wrong with me, right? you're here watching and I appreciate that but this movie these characters god I wanted to punch a bunch of them they're just so punchable doesn't mean the performances are bad they give what Wes Anderson wants and it is a better made film than Rushmore it is edited even better but it, it you gotta give me a character or two that I really am rooting for and not a single one in this entire family did I give a shit about so that movie was a big disappointment to me because I loved Rushmore. Did not see the theater, but I watched it on home video and I watched it a lot. I mean, I say five or six times. I've seen parts of it way more than that. 
Um, so when Royal Tenenbaums came out, I was disappointed. Then comes Life Aquatic, and I didn't see this one right away. It was it was a few months after it had been on a home video. Because of Royal Tenenbaums, I was like, yeah, I don't need to watch Life Aquatic. And then someone told me, no, 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 no. It's not like Royal Tenenbaums. It's different. The Life Aquatic, Steve Zizou, Steve Zizou is... Oh my god, I love this movie so much. It's an A, but it's like a high A. It's Jacques Cousteau. As if you're with the family that he has in his his boat, his submarine, whatever. It's so warm. The characters, Willem Dafoe's character in that. It's almost like he took Royal Tenenbaums and said, I want to tell another family story, but actually have characters. They're, they're in a weird situation. But the situation itself is the weirdness that's the the visual aspect the characters themselves are mostly grounded they're little they're quirky but they're not weird real tenenbaum's like it's not a weird situation it's just weird people and it's it was so weird it was off-putting to me life aquatic take characters that are relatable to a point they're weird and put them in to a scenario that yeah i, I don't want to say more about life aquatic without spoiling it there's a part of me that would even argue that it's a better film than Rushmore. I will say repeated viewings improve it even more than Rushmore, but Life Aquatic is one of my favorite Wes Anderson films, even if I can't quite say it's his best or it's his most acclaimed. Now, his first of two live action films is Fantastic Mr. Fox. George Clooney does the voice of Fantastic Mr. Fox. I mean, let, let's let's look at the rest of the cast of this because honestly, it's quite the voice acting cast. Oh wait, oh Darjeeling, I pulled that out already. Sorry, because I haven't seen it. Uh, here's the voice cast: George Clooney, Meryl Streep, Jason Schwartzman, Bill Murray, Willem Dafoe, Owen Wilson. Oh, there's way more than that. Roman Coppola, Brian Cox, Wes Anderson does a voice of a weasel. A Adrian Brody is a mouse in it uh Michael Gambon yeah as you're listening to this movie as you're watching the movie as you're listening to it almost every single voice is super recognizable and you're like the story is pretty good it's pretty good the balls that it takes to make a stop motion film in the 2000s in the 21st century there's Wallace and Gromit there's you and that's pretty much it right there might be one occasional weird thing here and there you're making a mainstream film for a for a major studio and it's stop action i mean trey and matt from south park made a movie with marionettes which was equally insane fantastic mr fox was a very enjoyable movie it's light it's airy it's kid friendly kind of and it's a pretty good B for me. The accomplishment of the craft of making it, it probably should be higher. But again, this is just my list in terms of my personal feelings for the film. Personally, I think it's a B. If it was on cable right now, I'd watch it. But I wouldn't really have this investment in it. I'm not going to stare at the TV the whole time. I'll pull my phone out. Life Aquatic's on, I'm watching it. Rushmore's on, I'm watching it and I'm quoting it. That's kind of why I'm putting them in that order. Now, Moonrise Kingdom, this is one that is kind of a C for me. In fact, I'm going to put it behind a bottle rocket. So again, a family. You see a pattern here. Quirky, weird characters. There's a Boy Scout thing going on with Edward Norton's character. When I do an Edward Norton tier maker, we need to find one. There's not one out there. As a coming-of-age film for a couple of the lead characters in it, it's pretty good. But Once was enough, and it wasn't one that I felt was really worth my time. It felt a little long. I think it could have used some trimming. And visually, it's almost like he didn't really have the budget to do everything he wanted to visually. At least that's how I felt as I was watching it. Um, a lot filmed outdoors. 
which is not a lot of his movies are filmed outdoors. I mean, they some of them are in, in bits and pieces, but a lot of this takes place outside. And then, um, I, just in terms of the story and the characters, they're not as off-putting as Royal Tenenbaums, but it's a little bit much, more so than Life Aquatic in terms of my relatability for them. And I'll be honest, in most of the rest of these movies, I can tell you what they're about. Moonrise Kingdom, I don't even really remember what that movie's about. I just watched it one time, and that was enough for me. So, it's a C. I didn't hate it. It's like a 5.5 to a 6 out of 10 for me. Not really a thumbs up, but still worth, uh, worth, worth, worth seeing once. If you're a fan of Wes Anderson, you've probably already seen it. Then he made the Grand Budapest Hotel. Uh, I went into this with low expectations. Again, he, he's had two movies that really hit for me. He's had three that were okay and one that I pretty much roundly just detested. Not, it wasn't offensive. Okay, you know what? You're right. I didn't, I didn't hate Royal Tenenbaums. I didn't hate it. I just really didn't enjoy the characters in it. We'll put it as a D. It's like a D minus, though. Fine. You can pass to the next grade. But in these movies, there's really only two that I really, really enjoy. So when the Grand Budapest Hotel came out, I waited again. I hadn't seen it in a the theater. I haven't seen... I've seen... I saw Royal Tenenbaums in a theater. And that's it. Grand Budapest Hotel. Ray Fiennes is in it. And if you said, what is your favorite Ray Fiennes performance of all time? My first is going to be English Patient. Go ahead. If you haven't seen English Patient, go ahead and make your jokes. Go ahead. It's a fantastic fucking movie. I'm glad it won the Oscar. It's incredible. All right? Say what you want. It's a little David Lean, a little Douglas Sirk. It is a phenomenal film, and I'm, he's great in it. His character is so good, and he is so good in that movie. Then I'm going to say in Bruges, because his character is the exact opposite of English Patient. Just wow. If you haven't seen In Bruges, you have to see In Bruges great dark comedy one of my favorite dark comedies something about there's something about the pacing of it that's a little weird it, it's Martin McDonough's best film I have not seen his new one The Bastards of Innis something I haven't seen it yet and I'm going to watch it even though I hear an animal dies in it and it's not great other than that I will still watch it where was I English Patient, Ray Fiennes, my favorite Ray Fiennes performances, English Patient number one, In Bruges number two, Grand Budapest Hotel, easily number three, maybe even competing a bit. He is zany, he is slapstick, but he is a reserved zany and a reserved slapstick, and I don't know how to explain that in a way that makes sense, but my God, his back and forth with the bellhop boy that's with him throughout that movie it is it feels like a movie from the 20s in the way that the story is is told but it is definitely 21st century at the same time the the pacing of it's good it's it, it just breezes along and it is so fun the entire time do i dare say it's better than life aquatic that's my thing because this is one of my favorite Wes Anderson films, and I'm going to say it is. It is better than Life Aquatic. I can't put it above Rushmore, but it's close. Grand Budapest Hotel is funny. It's subtle funny at times, knocked down funny at other times. It's heartfelt by the end, and it's just a great ride, and I want Wes Anderson to make more movies like this, please. It can't be easy. I mean, the script for this was... It might be the best script he's ever filmed, to be fair. The cinematography is opulent, says Soma. It's a really good word. It's a 
really good word. You feel like you're there in this in this hotel out there in the in in Budapest in the in the mountains and stuff. You feel like you're you're there. It's his his setting and the amount of establishing shots he does, wide angle establishing shots, is it's about perfect at the right times. Um, and it, and he did a lot with a little. Cause you can tell he they didn't get a ton of money. But he had enough. I would argue that, that film looks twice as good as Moonrise Kingdom, even though I think budget-wise, they're probably about the same. So, that leaves us with two movies. His second stop-action film, The Isle of Dogs. You know how I feel about dogs. And I had to look it up before I saw this. Does the dog die.com? Well, no. There's a lot of dogs. And there's a fake out. But everything's fine. I I'm so torn on this movie. The stop action's really cool. It seems different from Fantastic Mr. Fox, the way that they move. It almost well, it's because all the models are different and the dogs are different. <sighs> I'm so torn on this movie. There are things I love about it and the things I kind of dislike about it. It feels about 20 minutes too long, which is weird because stop motion. You think they can't just roll film and shoot a bunch of extra crap and shove it in there. You've got to map that out so well. You've got to know exactly how your film is storyboarded and how it's going to look. If you're going to make an animated film, a stop motion film, it feels long to me, and in, in, I think in the pacing of it. Not that you can cut much of the story, but... I really like the movie. But I don't know that I can put it... Well, Fantastic Mr. Fox is is better of, is the better of the two. The, the vibe in Isle of Dogs is definitely darker. Fantastic Mr. Fox is a family that's down in their luck. Isle of Dogs is is a much darker scenario, and even by the end, it's kind of like, yay, kinda. <laughs> like I, I don't want to spoil it. If you're a dog lover, I can't say you should watch this either because the stop motion and stuff—they don't really feel like dogs. Yeah, it's so I'm so torn by this movie. I have to give it a B minus. It deserves to be above a C. But it is so close to a C in the way I look at it. But I have to give it some respect. Uh, lastly, French Dispatch. This is new film came out a year ago, right? French Dispatch 2021. 2021. There it is. Budget of 25 million, grossed 46.3 at the box office. I people come out for Wes Anderson movies. It's pretty much the same kind of same kind of audience that comes out for them. I mean, he has a pretty died in the wool hardcore fan base. If you haven't seen French Dispatch, it is his most out of control. Z Zany's not the word. Some of his films, you feel like he had ADD, like hardcore when he was making it. This film is, it's like four short stories. The French Dispatch is, is a, a, a not real newspaper that Bill Murray runs. And hey, we're, they're closing us down, but we get to write one more newspaper. What should the stories be? And the film is basically showing you what the stories are. It's, it's a cool framing technique to do a bunch of different shorts in the movie and then to have that newspaper thing frame it not every one of the shorts is, is great but a couple of them really are the the prison art one with Benicio Del Toro and uh, Leah Sidu is so fucking good the back and forth with the two of them and the power struggle oh my god it if the rest of the film was as good as that short it would be an A for me. The budget that he had for this, it's all on screen for sure. You can see that he got the money to make it look the way he wanted to. And 
The shorts are not connected at all. The only connection is they are stories that are going to be in the paper. Um, I'm sure some movie nerd out there has made a connection because this theme is ties into this theme and then this uh, on paper there's not really a connection in watching the film no no there's there's the last story is really out there but it's actually the funniest one so as you're watching it you're like what the fuck but you're laughing at it at the same time i gotta tell you i respected this movie and it made me laugh it didn't the problem with a lot of wes anderson movies is they don't really pull you in and they feel like they should be a warm hug of a movie, but they're not. He, he, there's such warmth in the way his films are shot and edited. And some of the characters are really warm. And yet there's still something about them and his overall tone that is a little off putting as at the same time. That's why my favorite movies of his are the ones that let you in. Life Aquatic, you feel like you're on that sub with them. You feel like you're on that boat with them. Grand Budapest Hotel, you're just watching a farce. And it's so well done, and it's characters that you enjoy watching go through the ups and downs. Rushmore is... It's just a personal favorite. You could argue against Rushmore even being an S. You could argue against it. And I wouldn't tell you you're wrong. French Dispatch, though, is one that is really well filmed. It's really well edited. I can't argue against the technique of it at all. It's technically good film. I'm going to put it as a high B because it doesn't belong in the A's. But I think it's better than these two, than either of the stop motion films. That's my take. Now, that's how I feel about these movies. Where do you come out with Wes Anderson? He's a he's a divisive uh, filmmaker. He really is. He, he's... His films are very one of a kind. But I don't think I'm in that much of a minority in saying that I think Rushmore, Grand Budapest, and Life Aquatic are his best films. Some of you might argue that Royal Tenenbaums is his best film. Some of you might argue Bottle Rocket is, because it's the least Wes Anderson-y, that maybe that was your favorite. Are there people who will say Bottle Rocket's their favorite of his films? But it's hard to argue that it's his best. It's, it's almost impossible to argue that it's his best. I will tell you, Rushmore may not be his best film, but it's my favorite. But I would argue that Grand Budapest Hotel is one of his best films. And it just also happens to be a personal favorite. So, These are the films of Wes Anderson so far. What do you think? Chat? Live here on Twitch? If you Have you seen any of these movies? And if you have, where do you come out on them? I know Soma said... Uh, Soma in the chat said that Grand Budapest Hotel is opulent. The cinematography is opulent. It really is. If you're watching this on YouTube, which of these is your favorite? Put it in the chat and let me know. Leave a comment. Leave a like. Throw me a subscribe, please. I'm groveling. I'm trying to grow this channel. Uh, I appreciate you hanging out and watching this with me. I hope you enjoyed it as well. I enjoyed hanging out with you and talking about another film director. What's the next one? That's another thing. If y'all got comments, put it in the comments on YouTube or throw it in the chat right now on Twitch. What? What's the next one I should be doing? The next tier maker. Could be a wild idea. Throw it out there. And maybe we'll do it. Live on twitch.tv slash wheelerdealer. Thank you for watching. So long. <laughs>